He is Lewis Riddick, our good buddy from the mothership. He is in Indianapolis at the Combine, former Washington and Eagles director of uh, pro personnel, and of course a former NFL defensive back. Part of uh, Sports Center's coverage, NFL Live as well. And uh, Lewis joins us. How important is this whole process, the scouting process, to the draft? It's important, Dan, because it's another, it's another piece of the puzzle. And probably one of the most important pieces in regards to one, obviously, player health, because all 32 teams' medical staffs are here and they all get to put their hands on you, so to speak, and take a look at you. Although, I guess from what I hear, maybe that some players don't even want to do that now at this point. And number two, it gives you a chance to really, outside of the senior bowl, which was the first opportunity, it's your second opportunity now to kind of sit in a room in a formal interview setting in front of maybe like in the case of Washington, your owner, general manager, the head coach, the coordinator, the position coach, maybe the area scout, college scouting director. And they have like 15 minutes to try and peel back some of the layers real quick about who you are and get to know you a little bit in a face to face, in a face to face way. Now, some people don't put a whole lot of emphasis even on that anymore simply because in these 15 minutes these kids are so scripted sometimes it's almost like talking to a wall it's like talking to a robot i've been in some of those meetings where it's just like we just wasted 15 minutes of our time but are you but, asking football questions or real world real life questions it's a little bit of both it's a little bit of both i think from the real world perspective then you you should go in there knowing pretty much 95 percent of what this guy is about from a behavioral standpoint from a character standpoint so, so nothing in this meeting actually shocks you. I guess what would would shock you in this in these kind of meetings is, is when a guy kind of lies about something that you already know know about, and you just want to see if he'll be truthful about it. That's probably a bigger red flag than finding out new information. Is when someone lies and misrepresents who they are. I've been in those situations too, where man, it's been an immediate turn off. Maybe in, even removing a guy off the board because of the fact that you just know you can't trust him. If you were in with Caleb Williams. And let's mm-hmm. say you were still in a uh, you know front office position. Mm-hmm. What do you want to ask Caleb Williams? I, I really want to ask him about like what's the structure of his life going to be like as far as the kind of people who are advising him, who are going to influence his daily decisions as far as you know um, how he is going to integrate himself into the community of the place where you know he gets drafted to. Who's coming along with him? How are they, what role are they going to kind of play in his life as far as, again, managing his his mindset as it relates to his career, managing his mindset as it relates to endorsements, managing his mindset and, and kind of like shaping his mind, mindset as far as his personal life. See, those are all the things, all those distractions, I don't want to say distractions, but all those life things, I've seen those kind of things derail uber talented players more so than a scout or scouting director or a team getting it wrong about a player from a physical perspective. You want all those life things mess people up more so than anything. You want to know the infrastructure of the That's player right. you're going to, and certainly if you're going to take a quarterback, certainly if you're going to take somebody number one overall. That's right, because and and it's hard, man. It's it's hard to sometimes get at the authentic individual because they are so programmed and coached up to kind of keep it so vanilla that you can't really get a good feel for it. And so, you know what? So sometimes you almost have to go, you know, you almost have to play a little bit of a game of cat and mouse with these dudes. Like, right? so you're like, for instance, you bring a guy in for a top 30 visit into your organization to into your, you know, in your home facility, the guy who goes and picks up that guy. A lot of times you're downloading information from that person about how were they when they got in the car? Who were they on the phone with? What were they having conversations about? How did they treat you? Were they complaining about the fact that maybe they weren't in first class or that, you know, the car that you're picking them up in isn't nice enough? Because I've been involved in that too. And then that guy who's like complaining and moaning and constantly just being a pain in the ass, to be quite honest with you, as soon as they get to your facility, then it's yes, sir. No, sir. I'm just happy to be here, sir. I love it here, sir, et cetera, et cetera. And you're sitting there going, but the person who just picked him up, who was an intern, tells you this guy was insufferable. He complained the whole time. He was like, <laughs> I, he was on the phone telling his family, I hope to God I don't get drafted there. <laughs> I, we've had that happen. Is it, this is a real story? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. 
I'm not going to say who it was, but it absolutely is. Did you draft him? No. And he wound up kind of busting out of the league after being a um, a day two draft pick, who some who many thought would be a day one draft pick. Mm. He busted out of the league pretty quickly. Talking to Lewis Riddick of the Mothership. He's at the Combine in Indianapolis. Uh, hand size still matter? That's going to be a big deal uh, when the numbers come out uh, today or tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, when it comes to quarterbacks, for sure, man. Because ball security, right? Every week, what's the number one thing you probably hear analysts talk about all the time? Turnovers. Coaches, what do they talk about? Turnovers. Guys with little hands who put the ball on the ground? I mean, it, it, freaks, it freaks scouts out. Because what they're, what they're saying, look, they don't ever – scouts and GMs never want a paper trail coming back to them that points to something that they overlooked and or didn't put enough emphasis on that ultimately winds up costing the team games. And quarterbacks putting the ball on the ground because they can't grip it in all kinds of weather, that's one of the easiest things in the world to kind of like obviously assess in terms of hand size. I mean, you, you ever you, – you, you know Russell. Will you ever shake Russell Wilson's hand? It's yeah. huge. Yeah. It's gigantic. He doesn't have a whole bunch of ball security issues throughout the course of his career, and he throws in all kinds of weather. So, yeah, that, that's still going to be a big deal. Why does it feel like Sean Payton wants to move on from Russell Wilson? Where, where, he, where's the magic that Russ once had? You know, you know, like as, as people, man, like sometimes we, we just have these – you know, the, these the, the, these preferences as far as how we, you know, what kind of people that we jive with and what kind of oh, people. So this is a personality conflict? Absolutely believe it is. Absolutely. It's followed Russ around too much yeah. for it not to be, for, for it not to have some truth to it. Yeah. Right? I mean, too many people point to the fact that, man, the guy's become real corporate. He seems so programmed. He seems so full of himself. Even if that's not true, that's the vibe you get from him in some Look, you know, Sean's type A, right? Sean's like Mr. Ultimate Alpha. I control everything. There's no way that's going to mix. There's no way. And you, the kind of outburst that he had on the sideline with a guy. I mean, Russell Wilson has Hall of Fame statistics. Yeah. You don't yell at a guy like that the way he yelled at him. You just don't. The only guy who, who really got it. Look, even Bill. Bill never, I never saw Belichick like publicly undress Tom Brady the way I saw Sean Payton undress uh, Russell Wilson this year. He may have done it in a team meeting room, but he never did it publicly to where it was like just flat out embarrassing. Yeah. That seems personal. All right. You're running the Bears. You're on the clock. What are you oh, doing? Boy. Here we go. Yep. Here we go. You know what? I'll tell you what. Man, see, all right, here's what I'm doing. If I have all the information like they have, and I do believe that. It wasn't, it, it wasn't only just Luke Getze that led to the underperformance of Justin Fields, but I felt as though Justin Fields' upside was lower than what I believe Jaden Daniels' upside is. Jaden Daniels is the guy I'm picking. Okay. Every year, every quarterback gets a week where we, we fall in love with them. This is, this is Jaden Daniels' week. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Like last year, when the debate was raging about CJ versus Bryce, okay, and everyone was like, Bryce is magic outside the pocket. Bryce is magic outside of structure. Remember, don't forget, don't worry about this year. Think about his Heisman Trophy year. Bryce, 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 Bryce. With CJ, it was CJ is the guy who just, you know, he benefited from all the weapons that he has. Ohio, Ohio State quarterbacks never turn out right. He messed up this whatever test that they gave him, and Houston didn't like him and all this stuff. I was one of those people who was like, look, there's something about – C.J. Stroud had some of the best throws I have I have seen in a long, long time at Ohio State, and the people there who I trust gave me the straight and narrow about him. Jaden Daniels, the more people I trust are giving me the straight and narrow about him, how he's conducting himself here, and the way I watch his progression from Arizona State to just this past year, this Heisman Trophy year. This isn't just all of a sudden where I'm going, man, you know what? I think I kind of like this guy. No, I'm talking about the media. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Is falling gotcha. in love. Not you, but the media. Now Orlovsky said, oh, I would take him number one overall. It feels like there's this weekly moment. Like next week could be Drake May where people are going to go, man, Drake May. Like we tend, well, we tend to do this because yeah. we got to have something to talk about. There, there, are some, there are some people in the media and otherwise, like Tim Hasselbeck, 
Oh, yeah. Swears by Drake May. Yes. Swears by him. Yeah. Um, Tannenbaum thinks that Drake May is going to be, could be like um, Justin Herbert. He thinks he re- reminds him of him. Um, quite honestly, what's funny is the guy who a year ago people were, and even this year to some degree were comparing to Ka- Patrick Mahomes, that being Caleb Williams, has all of a sudden started to fall out of favor. And we haven't played any game <laughs> in two months. And all of a sudden, he's like, well, he's the third best now. That's how crazy this gets. Exactly. Yeah, it is. Exactly. Um, but I wonder, if you're the Bears and you really think that Jaden Daniels is equal, if not better, than Caleb Williams, yep. how do you do that? How do you play Washington that Washington will will still trade up to get Caleb Williams? Like, you can't tip your hand. But right. you, you want Washington to give you something to go up to get Caleb Williams, even though you may not want to keep that pick uh, and take Caleb Williams. Yeah, I, I think, you, you know what, that's where you start leveraging relationships uh, amongst, you know, the rest of the general managers. And you quite honestly, you say, hey, look, is there one of these players that you want, that you definitely want, that you know that you're going to tell us you're going to take? You're going to tell us who you're going to take. Wait, and so they, are you with the Bears? Are you still with the Bears? I'm, I'm saying I'm with the Bears. Okay, so are you saying to Washington? If Washington says this, because Cliff Kingsbury's there, right? And Cliff has coached Caleb. Yeah. And I don't want Caleb. I mean, I'd take him, but I would prefer Jade. And I say, hey, look, who do you want? Who Who are you? Do you are, and if they called me and said, hey, look, I want we want to get into the, into the number one spot because – we want to draft Caleb, and our intel tells us, you know, that you're you're considering obviously taking him clearly, but we want to make sure we get our guy because that's who Cliff told us we need to take. I'd let him take. Then I would make the deal, especially if in my back of my mind, I like Jaden anyway. So go ahead and take him if you want to assure yourself you can get him. Go ahead. See if Is I'm really- I'm Washington, I would call your bluff and say you take whoever you want. Chicago, oh. and we're going to take the next guy. But if but if you call me, no, and- I I can't call you. I can't call you. I want you to call me because then I have a little bit more leverage. If I call you, I don't have leverage. That's true. But if you really want Caleb, you'll call me. I really want him, but man, a consolation! I can't overpay if I think they're that close. I'm not going to overpay. We've seen too many teams that get desperate and they do that. And I, I, yeah. I would not do that. That's true. But, but you know what? Here, here's the, the only thing I would say, though, is this. When you have someone on the inside, and let's just assume that Cliff Kingsbury right now is hammering Dan Quinn and Adam Peters saying, Caleb is who we have to have. <laughs> I coached him. We can trust him. And they're like, well, we don't really know what Ryan's going to do. So you know what? Okay, let's. I'll go, I'll give him a call and see you know whether or not we can strike a deal so we can assure ourselves of getting him. As soon as they they as soon as my phone rings and I see it's Adam Peters, I'm going into. So what are you calling for, bud? What do you you want to get up here? I'm not giving him any indication on what I'm thinking, and it may fall exactly the way I want. I get the guy I want, and I add some more draft picks, which would be ideal. Yeah, if you're the Bears, that would be great. If if you want. Jaden Daniels, you want Washington to think you would still take Caleb? They'll trade right. up. You get you get some draft capital, yeah. as we like to say. But eh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know what? I'm sure Ryan. If let's just assume that Ryan Poles would be thinking that. I mean, that's why you have to keep it vanilla. You have to keep it out. You have to constantly put out there that message of we're considering all options. Heck, we might even just keep Justin Fields. Of course, we like all the quarterbacks. Yeah, you want to keep it as <laughs> you want to stay as poker face as possible. What did you think of the movie Draft Day with Kevin Costner? I've never watched it from beginning then. I've never watched it. But it's about the front office and making decisions, and then you know, a, a coach. You know, I, I know. I don't know why. I just never wanted to sit down and see and and watch Kevin Costner play out something that <laughs> I was going through in real life. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was like, yeah, because you know what? I'll probably just get bitter and be like, that's not true. That's not true. Just be, you know, and be that old grumpy, get off my lawn. You don't know what you're talking about, guy. Uh, have fun there in Indy. Always great to catch up with you. Thanks for joining us. Of course, man. Thank, thank you. That's Lewis Riddick, ESPN NFL college football analyst and uh, spent time in the NFL and 
a few teams in the front office. So always a great person to talk to.